Yeah, I'm Jim Feinson from Gardner Supply Company that's based in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, we have about 250 year-round employees with seasonal employment. We go up to between 400 and 600 employees on a seasonal basis. The um, internet and remote sales tax will affect us uh, and our customers in a couple of ways. Certainly for us, we're one of those sort of small to mid-sized companies that it's going to be a disproportionate administrative burden. Um, the cost of acquiring software, I know there's supposed to be free software, I think we're going to need a consolidated software. Um, we've started pricing that, it's going to be thousands of dollars. Uh, integration into a relatively sophisticated computer system is going to be really onerous and costly. We're going to have to have administrative support both to run it, to classify all our products. On a, you know, we have thousands of SKUs, and thousands of new SKUs to classify those so that we'll understand you know, how they get gauged by the software. It's really going to be a huge burden. And of course, that's just additional cost. It doesn't boost our sales in any way. So it just you know, reduces our, our bottom line and, um, and means we're going to have to cut costs elsewhere. Well, we're certainly concerned about um, the potential audit requirements. Um, we have gone, you know, every year we go through a, ba a bank audit. Um, and that's you know, weeks of work and auditors on site. Uh, we go through a financial audit. Um, we've had um, a Department of Labor audit. Um, you know, these are not small things. Uh, the auditors sweep, swoop in, um, they take time, they take time of our staff, it's a lot of work. Again, it adds no value. Um, you know, and we've always had successful outcomes, but the prospect of having to do that over and over again for state by state, uh, it's, it's really daunting. I think for our customer, um, we have um, uh, um, a lot of older customers. We have customers who still like to send in mail orders and pay by check. We're going to have to find a way for them to understand um, uh, what the tax is. And so the complexity that's going to mean for our customers is going to, be, going to be severe. I think it's going to probably keep some people from ordering who would otherwise want our unique products. Um, and it's going to be another big burden on us because we're probably not going to chase down a customer of, over a small difference in tax, which means we're going to have to deal with those differences, we're going to have to pay for those differences, we're going to have to deal with the inevitable errors that are going to occur. So I think it's going to be a burden on our customers and it's going to be a significant burden on us. We don't want to go and argue about what's fair and what's not fair, because certainly whatever you know, side of the fence you're on, you view it as fair or unfair. We just say if something's going to happen, let's take the time and, and do it right. I think they've really rushed with the legislation without really understanding uh, the effects on, on all the companies involved. And where there may be some people who might win by having remote sellers collect tax, let's just see whether the effect on those who are now going to have this tax imposed um, is that in balance. This is sort of a different kind of fairness question. You know, the local retailer, um, you know, they collect one tax for one jurisdiction. We're going to have to collect it for thousands, and we consider ourselves a local retailer. You know, we're on Main Street. We're Main Street jobs, and so we want to say, let's let's take the time to go slow to do this in the best way, so we can preserve jobs all around and really have it be fair all around.